Welcome to the chilling recap of I Spit on Your Grave 2, a harrowing journey into the depths of revenge and survival. So the movie kicks off with Katie, a waitress in NYC with dreams of becoming a model. She's chatting with her fellow model friend Sharon, who drops the bomb that she needs to update her portfolio to land gigs. Katie's all in, but then reality hits her hard. The cost of a professional photo shoot is sky high, and she's broke. Desperate for a solution, she stumbles upon an ad for a free portfolio shoot. Intrigued, she heads home and bumps into her neighbor Jason, who's having a hilarious rat-chasing moment. So Katie's back at her place, hustling on her portfolio for a hot minute before dialing up the number on that tempting free photo shoot ad. Ivan, the photographer dude, picks up, all curious if she's a model. Smooth move, Ivan. He requests a pic of Katie for the promo ad, and she obliges. Quick as a flash, she gets a text with all the deets for the shoot time place, the whole she, bang. Next day rolls around, and Katie's off to chase her modeling dreams at the designated spot. All right, so Katie's at the photo shoot spot, and she's greeted by three Bulgarian siblings, Ivan, Nikolai, and Georgie. Ivan's the photographer and his bros are helping out. Things start off okay, with Ivan asking Katie to slip into a sultry black outfit for the shoot. But then, things take a weird turn. Georgie's acting all googly-eyed towards Katie, and Ivan suggests she strips down even more for the shots. Katie's not having any of it, though. She smells trouble in bolts, thinking they're out to exploit her. Smart move, Katie. Next day, Georgie pops up out of the blue, offering her the pictures. Something fishy's definitely going on here. Okay, so Katie's done with Georgie's creepy antics and refuses to take the pictures. But this dude's persistent and talks her into it. Still, Katie's not feeling too safe around him, so she locks the door as soon as he leaves. Meanwhile, back at the studio, Georgie's practically obsessed with Katie's pick's major red flag. Later that night, as Katie's just minding her own business, taking out the trash, guess who sneaks into her flat? Yep, you guessed it. Georgie. Katie's smart, though. She locks up tight and hits the hay but her peaceful slumber gets shattered when she wakes up to the sound of her camera breaking and finds Georgie snapping creepy pics of her bedside. Things escalate quickly as Katie tries to get Georgie out of her apartment, but he's not budging. Desperate, she grabs a taser gun and gives him a shock, but Georgie's tough as nails. Katie tries to flee, but Georgie catches her in a flash. It gets even darker when he resorts to violence, hitting her and gagging her to silence her screams. It's terrifying. He even pulls out a knife and ties her up with wire. Just when it seems like all hope is lost, a glimmer of salvation appears. Katie's neighbor Jason hears her cries for help and rushes to her aid. Thank goodness for unexpected heroes. In a chilling turn of events, Georgie lurks behind a door, waiting for Jason's unsuspecting arrival. As Jason steps in, Georgie launches a brutal attack, stabbing him relentlessly until Jason collapses to the ground. Tragically, Jason is then forced to witness Georgie's horrific assault on Katie as Georgie viciously tears her clothes off and proceeds to rape her. The scene is nothing short of harrowing, with Katie's desperate cries for help echoing in the room as Jason's life slips away. In a shocking twist, Georgie calmly reaches out to Ivan, casually informing him of the horrifying situation. Finally, Ivan and Nikki arrive the plastic gloves they wear serving as a chilling reminder of their hidden identities in this gruesome act. As Georgie and Ivan realize the gravity of their situation, they scramble to cover their tracks. Ivan's grim revelation that Georgie's fingerprints are all over the crime scene sends them into panic mode. With a chilling new plan in place, they force feed Katie Ketamine, hoping to frame her for the crime by getting her fingerprints on the murder weapon. Meanwhile, Georgie frantically wipes down any surface he touched, trying to erase all traces of their presence. The scene then takes a dark turn as we find Katie awakening in the back of a truck, disoriented and terrified. Her nightmare only worsens as she finds herself in a basement, stripped naked and handcuffed to a pipe. In a sickening twist, Nikki, one of the perpetrators, rapes her while she's still vulnerable and helpless. But just when it seems like there's no hope, Georgie bursts into the room, abruptly stopping Nikki's assault. While still feeling the effects of the drugs, Katie pleads for water, but instead, Nikki does something unspeakable, triggering a fight between the two brothers. Yvonne eventually intervenes, but the situation remains tense. 
As they prepare to leave, Ivan tosses a filthy blanket at Katie, urging her to rest. Despite Katie's desperate attempts to escape, she's unable to break free. Later, Ivan tries to get her to wash up by dousing her with water, but she refuses. Georgie offers to help, but Katie refuses his touch. As Katie's screams echo, Nikki cruelly administers another dose of ketamine. Left alone with Georgie, she's subjected to his disturbing actions as he tries to clean her up. But Katie, determined to fight back, cleverly expels the pill by vomiting forcefully while pretending to be unconscious. Seizing the opportunity, Georgie uncuffs her to fetch clothes, only to be met with a surprise attack as Katie strikes him with a water bucket, knocking him down. With adrenaline pumping, Katie makes a daring escape through a window, finding herself in a strange place. Desperate for help, she approaches cars and people, but her pleas fall on deaf ears. It's only then that she realizes she's far from home, no longer in New York. In a stroke of luck, Katie manages to flag down a compassionate English-speaking man who stops his car for her. Pouring out her heart, she reveals the horrors of her kidnapping and assault. However, her relief is short-lived when she realizes she's in Bulgaria, a place she has no recollection of traveling to. Meanwhile, back in the basement, Nikki discovers Gregory on the floor but can't find Katie, prompting him to rush to inform Yvonne. On the other side of the story, the man who rescues Katie turns out to be Detective Kirill, not just a good Samaritan. Concerned for her well-being, he advises her to seek medical help, but Katie's trauma leaves her terrified of being touched. Despite her detailed account of the events, Detective Kirill is skeptical of Katie's story, finding it hard to believe. As Katie reaches her breaking point with Detective Kirill, she demands to go to the American Embassy and refuses to answer any more questions. Suddenly, a woman named Anna interrupts, claiming to run a shelter and offering to help. Despite Katie's insistence on going to the Embassy, Anna gains her trust by revealing scars similar to Katie's own. She convinces Katie to clean up before heading to the embassy and escorts her to her home. However, Katie's sense of safety shatters when Anna leads her to a basement, the very same one where she was held captive. Shockingly, Anna is revealed to be the mother of Nick and Georgie, adding a disturbing twist to the unfolding story. Anna, revealing her true allegiance to her family, spits on Katie and slaps her, furious that Katie would dare to harm her loved ones. Ivan wastes no time in locking Katie back up. As if things couldn't get any worse for poor Katie, she's subjected to even more horrors inside Anna's house. Then a sinister figure named Valco enters, wielding a taser. Katie becomes his victim, enduring unspeakable violence and rape at his hands, while Anna cruelly revels in her suffering. Just when Katie thinks it can't get any worse, Yvonne enters and adds insult to injury by verbally abusing her. In a moment of defiance, Katie, bloodied and battered, retaliates by slapping Ivan. This only fuels his rage and he viciously beats her. As if that's not enough, Nikki, another member of the Twisted family, further degrades Katie by ripping her clothes off before imprisoning her in a box. The nightmare reaches its horrifying climax as Katie finds herself buried alive in the basement, left to suffocate alongside Valco's taser. In a miraculous twist of fate, Katie's prayer is answered when the bottom of the coffin breaks, sending her tumbling into the sewer below. Meanwhile, Nikki informs Ivan that they can finally celebrate, now that Katie's out of the picture. But Yvonne, ever cautious, believes it's too risky to return. As Katie awakens in the dark, damp sewers, she's naked and injured, left to fend for herself. Desperate and determined to survive, she drinks the filthy water and scavenges for clothing wrapping a piece of cloth around her body. With sheer grit and resourcefulness, she finds a discarded lighter and manages to start a fire, providing much needed warmth and light in the grim surroundings. Despite her ordeal, Katie finds solace in the small victory of nourishing herself with whatever rotten food she can find. It's a testament to her resilience in the face of unimaginable adversity. After gathering enough strength, Katie ventures through the sewers until she discovers a door leading to a church. There, she resorts to stealing food and clothing from the church and nearby construction site to survive. However, her thievery catches the attention of Father Demove, who realizes she's a rape victim and offers her compassion and assistance. Grateful for his kindness, Katie receives food, clothes, and a Bible from the church. Despite her initial intention to seek refuge at the American Embassy, 
Katie finds solace in the church instead, where Father Demove warmly welcomes her. However, even in this safe haven, Katie remains haunted by her trauma, still terrified of letting anyone get too close. It's a poignant reminder of the lasting scars of her ordeal and the long road to healing ahead. As Katie grapples with her trauma, Father Damov challenges her to confront her past instead of running from it. But Katie, still reeling from her ordeal, insists she's not running and leaves. Concerned by the passages she's been reading in the Bible, Father Damov senses Katie's desire for revenge. Fueled by determination, Katie breaks into Anna's house and steals money to finance her quest for justice. She starts tracking down the three brothers, her sights set on retribution. In a daring move, she slips a crucifix into Gregory's coffee and lures him into the sewers where she confronts him with a metal rod. Meanwhile, at the church, Father Demove confides in Detective Kirill about a woman in need of help, leaving the detective to piece together that he's referring to Katie. United in their desire to assist her, the two men set out to support Katie in her pursuit of justice, marking a turning point in her journey towards healing and closure. In a chilling turn of events, Katie takes matters into her own hands. She ties Georgie to the wall and inflicts excruciating pain upon him with a pocket knife, mirroring the agony he caused Jason. Adding to his suffering, she smears feces on his wounds, ensuring a slow and agonizing death. Later that night, Katie drugs Nikki and brutally attacks him before drowning him in a toilet filled with filth. Meanwhile, back in the sewers, Georgie somehow manages to cling to life as Katie subjects him to the same torture she endured. The next day, amidst the solemn atmosphere of the church, Volko is startled to spot Katie lurking nearby. In a shocking turn of events, Volko follows Katie into the sewers, only to be knocked unconscious by her. When he wakes up, he finds himself tied to a bed as Katie exacts her revenge, using his own taser to deliver a deadly shock to his genitals ultimately electrocuting him to death. The next day, Anna discovers that someone has broken into her house. Upon investigating the basement, she realizes that Katie is still alive when she sees evidence of her presence. In a twisted twist of fate, Katie pushes Anna into the hollowed ground, trapping her in the sewers alongside Georgie as he meets his grim fate. Meanwhile, Ivan returns home to find the open ground, finally realizing that Katie is still alive. In a gripping turn of events, Detective Kirill confides in Father Demove about Katie's recent encounter with him and Anna's involvement in taking her away. Meanwhile, Ivan's unfortunate decision to enter the sewers leads to his capture by Katie, who inflicts unimaginable torture by crushing his balls after tying him to a table. As Father Demove and Detective Carroll race to Anna's house upon hearing the screams from the sewers, Ivan reveals Anna's dark past as his stepmother, a victim of his father's rape shedding light on her sadistic behavior towards Katie. When Kirill arrives, she aims her gun at Katie, halting her from killing Ivan. But in a shocking turn, Ivan tries to strangle Katie, forcing Kirill to make a difficult decision. She shoots and kills Ivan to save Katie's life. With Anna as the sole survivor, she faces arrest for her complicity in the crimes. The final shot captures Katie's determined stride towards the American embassy, symbolizing her journey towards freedom and justice as the movie reaches its gripping conclusion. We hope you've enjoyed reliving the suspense and tension of this gripping film with us. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more thrilling recaps and hit the like button if you found this video insightful. Thank you for joining us and until next time, stay tuned for more unforgettable cinematic experiences.